another week has passed in this journey we call life, which means it is time again for another recap video. But before we get to that, here is another DIY project from yours truly. custom envelopes by tracing existing envelopes onto nice paper. But what if you don't have an existing envelope in the size you need? Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for any size envelope in the world. If you're going to be making multiples of the same envelope, I suggest making your pattern on a piece of plain paper and then cutting it out and tracing it onto your nice paper. If you draw directly on your nice paper, make sure you do it in pencil so that you can erase all of the lines afterwards. So begin by figuring out what size the envelope needs to be when it's finished. If you already have a card, you'll want to add an eighth inch or so all the way around so that the card can actually fit into the envelope. So I'm going to be making a little envelope that is two inches by three inches. Begin by drawing a rectangle in the center of your paper that is the exact size that you need, and then extend all of the lines out a little bit. It's really useful to have a clear gridded ruler for this project, but if you don't have one, then use a triangle or a t-square to make sure all of your lines are exactly straight and all of your angles are exactly 90 degrees. Once that rectangle is drawn, draw another rectangle around it that is about 3 eighths of an inch or a centimeter bigger on every side. At this point I'm going to erase the corners so that it's more clear to you guys what I'm doing, but this step isn't necessary. And then measure the center of each side and draw a cross down the middle. Now take the width of your rectangle and divide it in two. Mine is three inches, so I'm going to measure one and a half inches from each side. Measuring from the original rectangle and then I'm going to mark that on my center line and then draw a triangle using the points from the larger rectangle. Now for the top and bottom flaps, you want these to be a little bit bigger than half of the height of your envelope. My rectangle is two inches tall, so I could make them just over an inch, but I think it's cute when they overlap a lot, so I'm going to make mine one and three quarters inches and draw those triangles the same as the side ones. Now that your pattern is finished, it's time to cut it out. I'm going to draw along the cut lines so that you guys can see exactly where to cut, but you don't have to do this. We're almost done with the pattern, but in order to get it to fold a little more nicely, I'm going to cut small triangles out of the right angles so that they're more like obtuse angles. And there is our finished pattern. Same as we did last week, just trace it onto your paper, cut it out, and add some creases. Once you see how far they overlap, you can also cut off the top of the bottom triangle so that it has a flat top and then just glue it all together. You can make these at any size and with any paper you want, but I'm also going to show you how to make a differently sized envelope with the same proportions. Just grab some scrap paper and draw along the edge of your pattern with a black sharpie so that it bleeds in and gives it a black outline. And then use a copy machine to enlarge or reduce it. And then you can cut those out and use the patterns to make as many envelopes as you like. Even a really tiny one, which is just so cute. I also made one out of maps and I made a long and skinny one, but I would love to see what kind of envelopes you guys decide to make too. Those envelopes are so cute. Now I need to come up with another project just so I can actually use them for something. Let me know if you guys have any ideas. But enough with the envelopes. On Monday, Meg showed us how to make these kissy lips and conversation heart coasters, which really are cute enough to use all year long. You have the quickest and easiest little valentine in the world. Use the same technique to create conversation hearts and just hand sew a little custom message on there. On Tuesday, Marianne showed us how to make this delicious heart-shaped Valentine's breakfast. There you go. You could also make this with turkey bacon or even soy bacon. I think bacon makes everything better. <laughs> On Wednesday, Julia showed us how to make paper flowers, which are going to last way longer than the real thing. And plus, they would look super cute in a bouquet for a wedding. The glue will dry to a clear finish and then you're ready to display your flowers. You can even spray them with a floral perfume if you want them to be a little more like the real thing. Thursday was, as always, Throwback Thursday, and this week we learned how to make cupcake candles, which is a little bit of an involved process, but they just look so amazing. And you have a birthday cupcake. Now that's what I call eye candy. And finally, on Friday, Anne showed us how to make heart tote bags with glitter and fabric paint gradients. Peel off the sticky masking and let this set for another two hours or so before using it. 
So that was our second DIY Valentine's week. I hope you all had a great day, whether you celebrated or not. So moving on to next week, you guys seem to like this game, so guess again. Whose video do you think it is, and what do you think they're making? Leave your guesses in the comments below. And also feel free to leave a comment on any of the videos we make if you have any requests for craft projects that you want to see us do. Because we really love taking requests from all of you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching HGTV Handmade. I will see you all next week. Don't forget to keep crafting. DFT Casey? Can we make that a thing? Bye.